Feathered dinosaurs are often the topic of conversation among many people who find the Jurassic Park series to be lacking in factual scientific integrity. With many detractors citing this point as well as the differences between Velociraptor Mongoliensis and what the Velociraptors look like in the films to be inexcusable issues that immediately demote the merit of the franchise. I've done a few videos on scientific integrity within the film series before in the past, but there's one specific topic that I've actually avoided talking about until now. The main reason I haven't brought up the lack of feathers and the dinosaurs cloned for Jurassic Park is because it's a part of another topic that I've covered extensively. But now that it's 2018 and the releases of Fallen Kingdom, Evolution, and the 25th anniversary of the first film are upon us, I figured it a good a time as any to go into detail about this problem. For those unaware, I've discussed the existence of the Mizrani Global website here numerous times, usually bringing up the cryptic message that alludes to gene splicing being used in the creation of an accident left on Sorna. But the subject of this particular discussion is actually a conversation on how difficult it became for engines geneticists to replicate feathers in their cloning process. Now of course we're talking about canon science here which is a bit different from modern technological conventions but still extremely relevant nonetheless. It appears that Dr. Henry Wu had actually been working hard on giving his clones feathers way back before 2003 when the email message I've often described was dated. Wu himself called this problem the common cold of genetics and says that because of the manipulation and mutation of these animals' genes, feather replication had become increasingly hard to create, and he didn't think that this would be achieved anytime soon. By adding frog, bird, and reptile DNA, they had accidentally created what they called a null allele, which couldn't be worked around. The dinosaurs in Jurassic Park and Jurassic World couldn't be engineered without filling these gaps into their DNA, and as such, they were pretty much stuck with scales during this time period. Wu had faith in eventually breaking through this barrier though, and actually took his abandoned experiment that he left on Site B as a good sign, and believed that his research and further gene splicing would ultimately lead to their success. Of course, feathered dinosaurs have yet to be seen on film, but this answer as to why exactly we've yet to see such physical attributes on the big screen is pretty interesting and a really well-written expansion on what happens behind closed doors inside of InGen. Of course, the real reason in terms of why the filmmakers didn't create this is because the public is unfamiliar with feathered raptors and other types of dinosaurs so far to the series, and I don't think they wanted to scare anybody off with this new depiction so early on in its reintroduction. And while it's true that many theropod dinosaurs are known to have been feathered in today's day and age, we're unsure as to what feathers on these animals factually looked like in most instances. And with the current scientific community repeatedly contradicting itself with newer discoveries, I don't think that the Jurassic Park franchise is the best place to test a hypothesis out that later gets disproven a year or so later. Examples of this include the fully feathered T-Rex from a few years ago, to the T-Rex with scales that is more recent, to the T-Rex that could only walk and run very slowly, lest it fall and die after breaking multiple bones. And I don't even need to talk about all of the redesigns and adjustments to the Spinosaurus that have been going on lately. My point being, I don't really see the merit in introducing something as scientific fact to the franchise when it may just get disproven in a relatively short time span. Imagine if the Jurassic Park film came out with a fully feathered spino that looks like a pelican, and then imagine newer science coming out that portrays it radically different. Looks like this thing is outdated again and now we don't have much of a canon answer to give it, so I guess we're becoming less scientific. The Jurassic Park franchise is a huge leap in the public's perception of how dinosaurs actually were. It may not be perfect, but I still think it's better than throwing guesses at the script and seeing which ones remain true for five years. Feathered versions of Engine's Velociraptor Enteropus would indeed be an interesting sight, but I think it's best to do it right if we're going to do it at all. I'd hate to see an artistic rendition of the animal get debunked by another artistic rendition two years later and create some kind of endless cycle of pretentious science. Kind of feels like an excuse to do something that will just get outdated as soon as it's published. And then there will just be even more detractors complaining about the same stuff despite all of this taking place. I know a lot of you are interested in seeing different versions of Jurassic Park's dinosaurs with feathers, but I want to ask you all if you'd like to see them, would you prefer to see them done scientifically accurate with no further questions needed asked as to what these animals actually looked like? Or would you prefer them to go the more imaginative route and cover everything with big fluffy plumage that looks striking to the eye? Either way, I'm rather hesitant to wish this upon the series. If we get a dinosaur that was cloned from its body being preserved in amber, like the feathers we recently found, then I'm all for it looking like that because we've got concrete proof. But I don't know about making everything fuzzballs with nothing to back it up and then getting the same type of hecklers that the scaly guys used to get. To me, it just seems pointless. 
Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope you all enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.